Hi scholars, it's Mrs. Will from Archway Lincoln, and today I'm going to read you a story called Ansi Ansel. Ansel Adams, A Life in Nature by Cindy Jensen Elliott, illustrated by Christy Hale. Ansel was antsy. He never walked, he ran. When he sat, his feet danced. Even his thoughts flew about like a gull in a storm. Ansel noticed everything and everyone noticed Ansel. Pay attention, said his aunt. Please sit still, begged his mother. Why don't you go outside, suggested his father. So Ansel did whenever he could. Ansel loved being outside on the Golden Gate Beach near his house. Nature was big and loud and wild. Gusting gales pushed and pulled. Salt spray stung his cheeks. Surf pounded the sand. Boom! Sometimes nature shook with a fury. In 1906, an earthquake, shiver, rumble, tumbled San Francisco to the ground. A trembler tossed four-year-old Ansel into a brick wall and he broke his nose. Nature left its mark on Ansel Adams. But nature could be quiet too. On Lobos Creek, it whispered and winked, flickered and flew, shimmered and shone for Ansel's eyes alone. Indoors, Ansel felt trapped and sick. At school, he got into trouble. Everyone thought they knew what he needed. Keep him calm, the doctor said, away from light and sound. Ansel yearned for wind and waves. Give him discipline, the principal said. Ansel felt like a fly buzzing around inside a jar. Ansel's father had a different idea. Give him open air, he said. He took 13-year-old Ansel out of school and let him learn at home. Piano lessons kept his hands busy and his mind focused. Between lessons in French, ancient Greek, and algebra, Ansel explored outdoors. He caught insects and made a museum in his dresser drawer. He scooped sand into cans and used a magnet to find flicks of iron. He gathered driftwood carved by the ocean, each piece a sculpture. A season ticket to the San Francisco's World Fair filled Ansel's mind with mysteries and marvels. Impressionists and organists, flavors and aromas and fun games. Ansel was on fire for learning. When Ansel was 14, his aunt gave him a book about Yosemite Valley. Ansel begged for a visit. The trip took two days by steam engine train and open air bus. At Valley View, Ansel got his first glimpse of Yosemite Valley. The ripple rush roar of water and light, light, light. It was love at first sight. One morning during the trip, Ansel's parents gave him a camera. He was off. Run, leap, scramble, snap. Rapid rumble, tumble, race, swoosh, flutter, flit, flee. Ansel's photos became a journal of everything he saw. From then on, Ansel went to Yosemite, camera in hand, to hike the High Sierra in summer light, icy white, glowing dawn, breathless height, danger by day, sparkling night, worlds of wonder snap in black and white. In Yosemite, Ansel met and fell in love with Virginia Best. They married and worked hard to make a living in the city. Snap, school pictures. Flash, a wedding. Click, a catalog. But nature whispered and winked, roared and sang, calling them back to Yosemite to live and work, sell Ansel's photos, and raise their family. Ansel worked outside every day. 
Soon, Ansel's photographs became famous. When the United States government and Life magazine asked him to take pictures, Ansel traveled far and wide, showing a nation, its true nature, and national parks, crystal caverns, and craggy peaks, canyons carved by time, silver rivers swirling through wide open land. giving voice to the voiceless, and giving politics a purpose. All his life, Ansel Adams noticed nature. Push, pull, flicker, wink, rush, roar, shimmer, shine. Now everyone notices Ansel's pictures. A world of wonder, snap, and light, light, light. I hope you enjoyed this book about Ansel Adams. Until next time, take care.